Welcome back, everyone, for another update on construction progress going on around the Disneyland Resort. And we're starting again this week at the Pixar Palace parking structure, where we've got another great week of updates. Some really cool things are happening, including concrete being poured uh, in front of the new parking structure. And you can see uh, the concrete there. It's, it's white like that because uh, that's like a dust from when they cut the concrete with, a, with a, like a concrete saw. I guess they do that to prevent cracking, which is interesting. But as we focus in, we've got our answer to what those those forms were that we saw last week. We asked the question, what were those for, those concrete cutouts? And obviously, that's uh, those are metal detectors. That's They're getting ready to put in some metal detectors. And uh, so that's why you have one in front of it. God, I mean, that's going to be a lot, of, a lot of lanes, a lot of entry lanes for guests to pass into... Uh, the structure to pick up their, or, or to get picked up by the tram. I think some folks had even guessed that, if I recall from last week. Uh, I didn't guess that, but <laughs> I think some did. But it does make a heck of a lot of sense uh, in terms of everything else that we know about what's happening in the structure. Now, while we're paused here, let's take a minute to something else that was noticed. Dustin, who helps us with our construction updates, observed that as, if you peek further into the parking structure, uh, you can see a stack of pallets there with some uh, paving stones. It looks like they are going to likely, uh, they're going to pour the concrete that, we're, you know, that they've started already, and then they're going to put paving stones on top of that to give it a more textured, pleasant look, which is really cool. So we're, getting, we're not just going to get plain old concrete, which is great. Uh, so that's what you're seeing there, is that you can see the kind of a stack of cut pieces down there on the floor, finished pieces there. Uh, on top of the pallets, and you can even see the, the, the stone, the, the paving stone cutter on top. Further, Dustin's son, who is uh, <laughs> watching these with us as an aspiring constructionizer as well, I guess, observed that there are some impressions in the, uh, or over the entrance there, and those are likely going to be uh, eventually signs that they're going to put in, probably like lane markings or something to identify to guests where to go? It's gonna, I, I don't know what kind of sign, but they are probably going to be some kind of sign. I'm guessing lane numbers or something like that. And so that's fun. I'm really enjoying that as we continue. Uh, there's going to be, this is going to advance quickly in these areas uh, and more as we pan over to uh, the guest hub. We're going to see lots more happening here as well. Uh, this is a place I, I wanted to focus on here. You got some, what looked to be conduit of some kind coming up out of the ground. I don't know if that's intentional the way it's arranged like that or if it's kind of it looks kind of haphazard and irregular but uh they're getting ready to do something there with that conduit by the way it also looks like they've set up another i didn't get i didn't ask dustin about this i don't think he observed it either but they're setting up something in that cutout area there uh i'll be i'll have to ask dustin about that for next week's update or maybe we'll even see what it is that they construct in that square area that they've cut out there. Lots of lots of uh, conduit and things that they're getting ready to add here. Uh, but we'll move on and see what's happening with the escalators, which haven't progressed much. Uh, you know, I'm, I, the escalator part of it is probably near complete. We're just waiting for those canopies. But over here, this is super interesting. Last week we observed that they had... Uh, started paving, putting down blacktop for a new tram path. And uh, this week, I, I it just they put up a tunnel. <laughs> and I think it's cool, right? I mean, it's cool that we've got this tunnel, but I, I'm very curious as to why. Why is there a tunnel uh, in this, you know, there, there has to be a reason for this, right? Uh, I've never seen them do anything like that before. And uh, I think it would be cool. Imagine the possibilities, like if you if they actually made that a feature of the tram ride, that you know you could do something cool as you go through the tunnel. But obviously, that's not the case. They're not going to put any kind of budget uh, into a simple tram ride from the parking structure, but you know, blue sky or whatever. So it was Dustin's idea or belief that they're actually going to move the pedestrian path over to this area. They're going to because they have some plans, I guess, for the current pedestrian path where you can see the guests walking there on the left. Those guests are coming from downtown Disney. Uh, there's a, it's a very long walk from downtown Disney across the street and over to the parking structure. 
Uh, some guests do that, and that is part of you know the 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 bridge that they're connecting is for the same purpose. Uh, but he believes that they're going to make this new tram path the guest path temporarily until they finish whatever they're doing with the guest path or until they're ready to make that an official tram path. So you'll see that connect with the rest of uh, you know, the, the tram path because they haven't finished it yet. As we pan up, you'll see um, where it's still just dirt. Uh, and they haven't they, ha they haven't poured any new blacktop down since last week. Nothing there. Now, if we'll stop here again, further evidence of this idea that the, that this is going to be a guest path, a new temporary guest path, is that bundle that you see there, that yellow bundle down there at the end of the path. Those are temporary lights, uh, and those will probably be strung up along this new temporary guest path, you know, at night, so that so that it's well lit. And that is something that you'll see Disney take a lot of care. And I actually noticed that myself when I walked back on this very trip. I noticed on these walking paths how well lit they are. There's lights everywhere. And you, you kind of take it for granted. Uh, but Disney is thinking of us in that sense all the time. Uh, so those will probably be strung up along that green fence there. We'll continue further and try to follow this path through the uh, guest hub again. Or, never mind, we're not going to do that at all. We're going to come look at these guys. Uh, those are planners. I think we observed these last week. Those are planners. And, uh, you know, that's probably going to be the, uh, the unload area for the tram. You'll see, you'll see trees planted there or some kind of, you know, shrubbery of some kind. And then concrete and eventually probably paving stones also, decorative paving stones in between each of those uh, planner areas. Now, we'll track the path. <laughs> I don't know why I did it like that. Or maybe we won't. I don't know. What am I doing? Uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, you can't really see it, but I'm guessing it's going to, as we mentioned before, cut through there. I'm trying to see if I can find it, but you can't see anything through the escalators and the trees. But there, right there, in the middle there, that's the path that the tram will go into under the guest hub. Now, I mentioned that we came from downtown Disney and walked it in because I wanted to see what's going on with the parking lot at downtown Disney. There's our establishing shot of the uh, security checkpoint entering downtown Disney. And you can see a good half of the downtown Disney parking lot now has been separated off by that fence. It's not yet closed all the way. Hey, there I am. Uh, you can still see the cars are parking there. It wasn't a busy afternoon, I guess. But the cars are still parking there, but they're going to eventually close off half of this in order to construct the new path. And that path is going to extend all the way. Maybe not the bridge, but a path will go all the way from uh, connecting from the Pixar Pal parking structure to the bag check area at the other end of the downtown Disney parking lot. And there you can see the earth movers and whatnot. And here's uh, uh, all that dirt. They're getting ready. They're getting ready to construct soon. You can see here that they've got, they've got different kinds of gravel that they're getting ready to put down. Now, this isn't going to be happening in the downtown Disney parking structure. They're just storing this dirt here for, for use over on the other side of the street, across the street at the Pixar Pal parking structure as part of the construction there. They just have, they're running out of space, I guess, to keep that kind of thing because that whole area is almost done. Uh, but you can also see uh, some forms that they're getting ready to put up. Those right there in the middle of the frame, those are concrete forms, and we, we haven't really seen those up close yet, which is kind of fun. Uh, but those are going that's, that's getting ready for the, for, the, uh, for the bridge. And as we continue, you can see more dirt here. And this is something that I was fascinated by when we, we watched them do Galaxy's Edge with these giant, you know, the Mount Spielberg. This is kind of a mini Spielberg right here. Uh, and there's a path that you can see where some of the earth movers have come and gone moving dirt from one place to another. I don't know if that's just bringing it in right now, but that dirt is going to be somewhere else, and they're going to take it, boop, they're going to come right out that gate and out into the downtown Disney parking lot and go somewhere. Here, actually, uh, right there, that is your parking structure bridge right there. That's where they're going to connect it. It's, you know, first floor, first level, and then it's going to, run across the street. Now what you're looking at here is 
another view, a reverse view of that new path, the new tram path. That's what the, the, the green fence that you're seeing back there being held up by those posts. That's the new pedestrian path that we said was going to, well, it's the new tram path that's going to be a temporary pedestrian path. So what we're trying to do here is show you that that's how it looks as it curves under the guest hub. See me get a closer look. And then it's going to travel left and into the structure that way, right next to that little bobcat looking thing. What do they call that? It's like an easy go of some kind. <laughs> and then from the other side, again, what you're looking at here is the very end of that tram path. And then it'll, you know, curve through the uh, guest hub there again. Right under there and into that opening. Nifty, right? Okay, enough of that. Let's go to DCA where this thing has happened. That's the emotional whirlwind. And out of the blue or purple, they've dropped in this uh, this new backdrop for emotional whirlwind. And obviously, this is a prefab thing that they brought in. You know, they did it off site and then brought it in. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Like, I would have, I don't know. I mean, I guess they do that a lot, do they? Uh, but that's a big hunk of thing. It's like, Plug and play, man. Snap on, snap on uh, play set that they've built here. Um, but there you go. What do you guys think of how that looks? Is that what your uh, imagination had conjured when you first uh, looked at the concept art? You know, in real life. Over here is the the new, uh, or I should say the uh, the canopies that we've been watching. They put in those trees. Those are interesting choices for trees here. Uh, those weren't here last week. It's kind of a dark and gloomy looking tree, isn't it? Not the kind of thing that I would have expected to find at Emotional Whirlwind, but hopefully they've got a plan for that somehow. And those things right here are interesting. We are trying our darndest to figure out what in the world uh, is their plan with those gray, <laughs> gray pipes. Uh, Dustin's not sure. I'm not sure. At first we thought maybe it had something to do with, you know, uh, creating a path for guests to you know enter the attraction it's you know part of the entrance area but uh there's only just the you know what the five of them six of them maybe uh and they're kind of narrow and close together uh it could be something that has to do with like a pre-show element uh i thought dustin's idea was pretty good or pretty cool where it, it, it might sense your mood or your what, whatever it is that your your current mood is uh it'll be some kind of display that's forward thinking. Uh, I, we can't glean anything, obviously, because it's just it's just electrical. That's all we know right now is that it's going to be something electrical. Uh, but I'd be interesting or interested to hear what your possible guesses are for those gray pipes. Here's a guy who's putting in some light bulbs. He can't reach it though. He's trying to put one in there and he can't quite get where he needs to go. I think. So he's just going to leave it right there. <laughs> and then move his ladder. Those things look like, those are, you know, the memory balls. They, they look like, like actual bowling balls to me. Um, again, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And then as we slide to the right and focus in, if your money was on, that's the area where they're going to put Anger's ob observation area. You were incorrect. Trees in a planter with some, uh, you know, I don't know, decorative flowers and stuff like that in there, hopefully but not the observation area, just trees and soil. Let's go over to Marvel Land, see what's happening there. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I got there too early on this morning, so the, uh, the, the carousel never stopped at the top for me to get Marvel Land, so I, don't <laughs> I was constantly moving. I went around three times. All right, let's see what we can see. Nothing back here. Uh, there's nothing to see here. I was hoping to find, um, you know, something to observe. But Dustin said there's nothing happening back there. It's just staging. So we'll continue again. Try to find something else to observe. You can see back there in that far corner where the gate is, or the gate was, I should say, uh, for the red car trolley, that there's a an excavator in the vicinity doing something or was has done something or is going to do something. Unsure what his uh, 
what his business is back there. Maybe to remove the actual gates, perhaps. That'll be telling, by the way. If they if those gates do go, that's kind of a final. <laughs> that's a that's a final gesture, in my opinion, uh, and it could be a very early clue as to the future of the red car trolley. Will it you know will it stay in this current area or will it does it have a different future? And if it's not the gates, then possibly the tree. Maybe they're taking that tree out. But he's he's got business back there for something. Again, here, trying to see if I can find anything, just getting current status on what's going on backstage, but it's nothing. And we probably won't see anything there for a while. So we'll go over back to the Bugs Life Theater uh, to see what's happening there. And there is stuff happening. They definitely dug out something trench-like. Remember that from last week when we saw the excavator back there? Because uh, you can see that, in, and then we saw the forms. You can see rebar uh, posted in the ground down there with those little orange caps on it. They're about ready to pour some concrete down there. Um, so if something is, you know, legit underway, uh, you can see some concrete, for, or not concrete, but steel um, supports piled up on the ground. Barely, you can barely see them down there. The, those are, you know, that, that, that's serious stuff. So we should be seeing more structure start to happen in this area. Or, or maybe not here necessarily, but over closer to the uh, Bugs Life Theater. Or the eventual, eventual Spider-Man attraction. Yeah, I mean, this thing was constantly moving. <laughs> I had a hell of a time uh, keeping focus. As soon as I got focus on something, as soon as I was able to clamp down on it, that thing showed up. And then I had to refocus and find something else again. It was not easy. Kind of one last long view of the entire area. And there it is again. I got to, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Just forget it. Next time I'm showing up at 8.30 and not 8 o'clock. Uh, but before we go, I would like to show you one more shot. A little cleaner shot. There we go. That's nice and clean of what's going on down there. You can see the, the cavernous area that they've dug out there for uh, Spider-Man and all that, you know, the, the structural steel down there. Okay, and before we go, again, here's our current status of the Silly Symphony Swings. I, they're still putting it together. Having a hard time with that, I guess. I also took a stop over at uh, the Hollywood Backlot to see if there's anything happening for the eventual Philhar Magic site, and no, nothing's happening there. Don't expect anything fancy here for Philhar Magic. We're going to get the show, and that's about it. Nothing, no cool facades. Okay, let's go to Disneyland where we can find some more construction walls up. These are around Princess Fantasy Fair. That's the donut cart behind those walls there. Uh, so there's a lot happening there, and then we'll take a look at, we've got some progress at the castle. Look at that. There's, the curb is gone. We've got new paving stones down there, and the curb is gone. Pretty neat. Let's see if there's anything going on behind the walls before we go further. I mean, all the cool stuff that I think, anyway, has already happened in terms of what's going on on the ground, and that's what we just saw, the curb and the new paving stones. You can't really see much through the wall now. So I don't know if we're going to be able to find anything through these knot holes or slits in the, uh, in the construction walls here. Uh, but what we do have is a finished product there, and that's the new color scheme for, uh, the, for the castle. I think the turrets are obviously going to match the castle, right? So you got a, a cleaner coat of paint on the brickwork there, the faux brick, uh, a brighter pink, and a much brighter blue on, on that turret. And I would expect, again, to see more of that on the castle. I really like this. I really do. And here's, by the way, uh, one of the little benches, the concrete benches that they have around the castle. These were under wraps behind the fence before, but I don't think that they did anything to them. I, that does not look new. All right, let's talk about this for a second, you guys. That's the Astro Orbiter, and it was supposed to be open already. Uh, I think that they had released or you know put out a prospective opening date, and that date has come and gone. I think it was supposed to be last weekend. Um, it didn't happen. Why, I wonder? Well, <clears throat> rumors suggest that they put it 
back together wrong. <laughs> that they messed up or something. They missed a piece. You know, somebody didn't get the, somebody didn't save those IKEA instructions. And so they don't know what the order of operations were. I'm kidding, of course. But that's just what I thought of when, when it was suggested to me that that's what's happening is that, you know, like step 14 and you got the guy scratching his head, like, what did we miss? Uh, <laughs> what, is, what is the Swedish term for astro orbiter? Asterisk orbitak. <laughs> the asterisk orbitak was put in out of sequence. Um, so it's not ready to go. We should be spinning already, but it's not. And, uh, they're having some issues getting this thing put back together correctly. But it will be back, obviously. They just, I think the idea is, or the question is, do they try to fix it as it stands or do they need to take it apart again? Uh, hopefully it's not the latter. Hopefully they can fix it as it stands without having to take the whole thing apart again. Meanwhile, over in, uh, or by the Autopia, the, the new planners here, and they, <laughs> so few trees, man. There was hardly any uh, trees left. There used to be a lot of trees there, you guys. Uh, and they've, they've created this little smaller planner, which is, I kind of dig the way it looks. I, it, it definitely is more appealing. It's part of the Tomorrowland, uh, you know, aesthetic. And I'm really digging these purple coral-like rocks that they put in. Uh, I was not expecting that. And it, it looks pretty neat. I like it. And you've also got uh, this little path that they've created. I don't know what demand that they're addressing here, like why they felt they needed to do that, but they've got this path from, I guess that's from the stroller area right on the other side of that path or the exit. Hey, look, is that Peter too? Oh my gosh, how did I miss him? That's Peter too. Anyway, <laughs> it looks like the strollers, he could go through there uh, on his way over to Atopia. You know, it's a funny story. I was just talking about Peter too while I was filming this, saying that he often goes to Atopia. And here's a look from, this is the exit of, At of Atopia. And that's how it looks from up there. So I'm digging it. Let's go to Frontierland, where we got something else completed. And that is the path that connects the Frontierland to uh, Adventureland. It is, uh, it's definitely more airy. We lost part of the fort wall there, you know, the log wall. We've lost part of that. But, it, you know, to make it wider, I'm giving you my own, <laughs> my, my hand is gesturing. But look at the cool view we have now of the river that that wasn't there before. You couldn't see any of that and hopefully they'll dress it nicely and put in, you know, those plants will mature and it'll look very nice. I really dig being able to see that river there. Uh, it does create a little more path. I believe that right there is the the previous, um, what do you want to call it? You know, that that's how narrow it was before. So they have given us a little more room. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of digging this. I know it's a trade off. I would have liked to have seen or kept that wall, but I like this view too. I like it both and here's a look as we look from the tiki room over. Does that open up that whole area quite a bit? I th really think it does. I think it opens things up quite a bit. And here's a view from Frontierland as you actually make the transition from one land to the other, digging it. I had lunch at the Hungry Bear, and while I was there, I saw this. Some uh, timber, some lumber down there on the ground. Dustin suggests that that is for possible retaining wall of some kind. Uh, this is probably just storage. They're not, that's not part of a construction thing that they're doing at the Hungry Bear, I don't think. I think they're just keeping it there, possibly for the entrance. I don't know why I just did that. Possibly for the entrance into Galaxy's Edge. I'm going back and forth. I hope you're not sick. Oh my gosh, and I did it again. That's the end. <laughs> I thought I had more, but that's for Star Wars Land, you guys. The footage that I'm looking at right now that you can't see. Uh, good times. That, is, that does it this week for our construction update. I hope you had fun. That was a lot to cover. Uh, it won't be as much next week because some projects are finished, but there's still lots to look at. So be sure to stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully we got at least one more week of Galaxy's Edge stuff to show you. And then I, I may or may not be done. I'm not sure. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and we'll see you next time. Fresh baked! We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!